Hey guys, before I start this video, I've got a question you guys I want to ask you guys and you can answer in the comments and you'll get the answer at the end of this video. So here's your question real quick before I start my video. Which head do you think has more swirl? This is a Flotec LS3 head and this is a small block Chevy Brodix Dragon Slayer that I ported. Which one of these two do you think has more swirl? And what I mean by that is, there's a blade that's right here in this, it's underneath the bore, and as the air comes through, it will turn the blade, and that will pop up as RPM on my swirl meter. And the one that swirls the most, or has the most air turning in the cylinder, will spin the blade more. So which one do you think has more swirl? Is it a Flotec LS3 head, or a small block Chevy head? Okay. Go ahead and answer that in the comments, and then the video is what not to do when porting, part two. Let that begin. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a follow-up from a previous video that's been watched by many people that are subscribers to my channel. The video was um, what not to do when porting heads. This would be a part two or a follow-up of that video, because I do read all the comments, although I don't respond to all of them. And one of the comments that got brought up a lot was, it's a lot of theory, but I don't have any numbers that back it up. So what this video is going to do is today is I'm going to give up, give some numbers to quantify what I'm talking about. So you can guys can kind of see what, what's going on. And I just happened to have two heads that came in that gave two good examples of what not to do. So for instance, this one's not related to the first part video. This one is. And I'll get to both and I'll try to do my best to explain. You don't have to watch that first video to do it, although I wish you would so I can get paid for more views. Maybe I'll make some money. But if you just watch this video, you get the idea. I'll go through a couple of things and it may seem repetitive from the first video, but it's just so you, someone doesn't have to necessarily go back and watch the other one. And I'll try to make it quick, so let's go. So first off, this head came in. A customer sent this head in and asked if I would um, refresh it because I said I won't port this head. The reason why is because this is a Pro Comp big block Chevy head. And I don't port these heads and there's a reason for it. A long time ago, I ported a set for a customer and he did really well. He had them on a 496 and a Chevelle, it ran really well. Anyway, he wanted to step up the head and he went to a Brodix head and he took off the heads that he thought were running well and I'd already ported. And he said, hey man, you need to see this. And he showed it to me and this is not that head. But what had happened was this would be in the seat. There were chunks throughout almost every one where the chunks of the seat had came off. This was nothing to do with me because the heads I had sold them were brand new. The seat material itself just, it failed. And, he, and by the way, if you think, well, did he have a solid roller? No, it was actually a flat tappet, solid flat tappet. So not a lot of spring pressure and it broke them. So after that, I was like, I'm not going to deal with Pro Comp anymore. So I don't port Pro Comp heads because they do run well, but the reliability issues, I can't get around. All right. So I just want to point that out first. So the guy sent these in to be refreshed. I don't mind doing that. But uh, anyway... I was like, oh, someone else supported these heads, and it's what not to do. It's the prime example of what not to do. So let me go ahead and describe what it is. So what you need to think about first is there's something called the throat, and the throat area is underneath the seat from here across. That's your throat area. And um, it really is setting up you really need to think of the throat area as more of the sitting, the center of the venturi section of the port. A venturi looks something like this. This would be your throat right through the center here. So you have big and it goes to here and this would be the seat or the throat and then it expands out into the chamber. This is where um, pressure recovery and everything comes from. This is what makes a good head. So the throat would be here. Now, when you're porting head, most times the safe percent for most throats, and this is safe, you can go a little bit larger and I'll talk about that in a minute, is 90%. This is on two valve stuff, four valve stuff, you're in a different world. So in general, and being very general, the throat usually is at 90%, a good safe place you can be. You're really not gonna hurt a head if you have a 90% throat. You're like, what do you mean by throat percent, whatever else? The way that you figure out your throat percent is you'd measure across from here to here, and what you do is you use something like this. And you can get these from Harbor Freight. They're usually in a kit. And I have some other um, things for them. I can't remember the exact name of this. It's giving my head right on top of my head. But all you do is you stick it in here and you go across like this. And then you use your dial indicator and you measure that distance. 
and you put that number here and you divide it by the valve head diameter. So in this case, when I measured the throat, it was 2.126. The head diameter, so what the valve should have been is 2.25. When I divide that out, it comes out to 94.5%. That is extremely large. So instead of having a Venturi look something like this, you actually have something that looks like this. It's too big in through here. And what it really does is it, it, it causes other issues because it's eliminating some of the angles or some of the ways for which the air could turn out of this area. So instead of it making a nice turn like this, it's more straightish. By the way, these are example pictures just to give you an idea. Now, you can go larger on throats than 90%. So, and I say 90% because it's safe, but a lot of the stuff I do for the racing stuff, I will put typically between 91.5 to 92.2. I rarely ever go beyond 92.2. Um, and you might say, can I do that? No. You got to remember on a lot of the heads I use, they're not 45 degree valve jobs. So this is a 45 degree thing like this. I will use a 50 degree so it's kicked more this way, which means it's actually moving the throw out and away, which is fine. <clears throat> Some of the more aggressive stuff is 55. So it's sitting much like this. So you can get away with a bigger throat. If you had a 45 and it's sitting like this and you make the throat large, you end up removing a lot of the other angles. So let's go to this head just to kind of show you. Uh, this being the seat undercut, and these got blended in, but and that's the top cut. When you do a um, larger throat, you end up removing those angles altogether, like what he has done here. So you've got the seat, and you've got this smidge of an undercut, and that's it, right into the throat. This one measures 94.5%, so it's really, really large. Not good. Um, you shouldn't do that. A lot of people do that. Um, and they do it wrong. Now, you might say, well, what's it do? And I'm gonna show you on this other head in a minute. But when you do this, what it does is, it will actually flow more. And you're like, wait, I thought you said this was bad. Yes, it will flow more, but like at peak lifts, like a one inch of valve lift. But it will be horrible at 400, um, 500, and lower for sure. And the numbers I care most about are four, six, and one. 400,000, 600,000, so one inch. And the reason why is because they give me, a, they're telling me some clues of what the port might be doing. If you do this, your 400 number is gonna be absolutely miserable. Your one inch number will be great, but it isn't gonna make up for this. And it, it just makes the head not very well, not good at all. Um, very, very bad. So I wanna show you that, what this idea is. And you're like, well, I thought you were gonna show me some numbers. Well, here's what I'm gonna do today. This head right here is the one, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, this is the um, internet ports heads. And this was a Flowtech LS3 head. And I let the viewers at, um, write what they wanted to see me do on this head. And I tried a bunch of different things. And you can go back and watch, there's so many videos on this head. And I tried a bunch of stupid stuff. And this will be the last thing I do with it. And what I'm gonna do on this head is I'm gonna flow it just this this port right here. I'm gonna go ahead and flow it just like it is. And it's throat right now, I wanna say is 91%. I'll measure it exactly and I'll write it on here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it 94%. In other words, I'm gonna make it bad, just like that. And then I'm gonna flow it again. And you're gonna see how the numbers actually change for flow from doing that. And um, you'll get to see what I'm talking about and how it loses numbers and gains certain numbers in other places. Um, in general so but this one you'll actually get to see really what happens so there's that's going to happen and this will be right after i get done talking about this this is the second thing i see people doing that's the most in, in, incorrect thing to do on a head and this being a small block chevy head so it's probably not after goal to you guys with big block chevys or even ls's but i see this lot done on the small block chevy head side of things and i don't have flow numbers for this but i'm going to go ahead and show you just in case what this is, this is a Dart Iron Eagle Platinum head. And he followed what the internet said. And the internet says, you find the restriction in the port and that's what you remove. Well, on the small block Chevy head, it usually is in the pushrod pinch. That's this area right through here. Because this is where the pushrod goes, through here, across, and that's it. So what this person has done is all they did was open up this area here. They did zero port work here. This is as cast the same way it was. That's it. 
You do need area for pushrod pitch, you're correct. But if you don't do anything here, you are wasting your time. Most of your flow comes from one inch before the valve seat and one inch after. So that lip there is hurting you more than all of that as far as flow wise goes. And you're like, well, don't you need area to make RPM? You do. You do need minimum cross sectional area, a certain amount to make RPM. You're right. However, this part of the port won't let you get that RPM anyway. So this has to be sized first before you can never do that. If you just do that, you have wasted your time. As a matter of fact, you probably made the head worse because you're giving more air to the spot, the short side, where it already can't support the amount of air it had before. And now you're giving it more air. So in the case, it actually, in a lot of instances, when you do this, you make it flow less because there's more air trying to cross the short side that's not shaped right. And it can't do it. And it flows less. It backs up and flow earlier. It flows less. You have to do this before you do this. That's my next thing. So anyway, I may get to flow on this head and then I'll ruin it and then I'll flow it again and we'll give the results. Okay, I have now uh, made the throat go from, it was 91 and a half before, it's now 94%. Same as the head I showed you here and I'm getting ready to flow it, but I wanted you to see it before I put it on the flow bench. So as you can tell, that's actually your seat right there. This is your undercut and that's the top cut. You could tell most of it's gone. Matter of fact, this undercut has lost a lot. Just to give you an idea, this one's kind of similar to it. You know, like see all this right here? It looks like it's gone, but no, all I did was blend it with the cartridge roll. So it's actually rounded, then angle, seat, and so on and so forth. So actually rounded, undercut, seat, top cut. Um, what this one is, it's just gone. It's straight down, it's removed, it's far less, and it's all the way around. So. This is 94%. I'm going to flow it and see what happens. Um, but I thought I'd show you first before I got it all put together on the bench. All right. I'm going to flow this thing. Okay. Just got done flowing. I'm going to let you know too. I added a swirl meter onto my flow bench. That's the reason why I floated on the Superflow. Both tests were done with the Superflow. Same clay radius entry. Um, take it off. Put it on. It stays pretty much the same shape. doesn't really change. Uh, 4155 bore, I will say that. So it's a bigger than what you'd have on the stock LS3. Same bore though for each one. So nothing changed. Same intake valve, same exhaust valve. Everything else is the same per head. The only thing that changed was the throat size. So let's look at the numbers. This right here is what it flowed um, with a 91.5% throat, 94% throat. So if you look at it, there's really not much of a gain or difference at a tenth of an inch valve lift. At two tenths, it's down 1.3, but that's really close to call. But this is kind of interesting. At 0.3, it actually gained nine CFM having the bigger throats. So you're like, oh, when? Mm, keep following. At four, it was down 3.1, five down 6.6. .6, and at six, it's down 20 CFM. Down 3.3, about the same at uh, 1.1 at eight, 2.2 and 6.3. So as you could tell, making that throat larger made it worse. This is strictly on flow numbers too. So forget everything else. This is just the flow numbers. If you look at the, um, the interior effect, you definitely destroyed it. So your pressure recovery is not as good with this. So besides losing flow, it's not as good as some of the other things that make cylinder heads good besides flow. So I wanted to show that first. Now, this is something a little interesting I do want to show you is because I have the swirl meter on it, I'm gonna show you some of the numbers for that. So bear with it, because they do change a little. And, oh, since I started this, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, hopefully I added, edited this on. Uh, in case you're wanting this LS3 head, and the answer to the question I hopefully put at the beginning is, it has less swirl than a small block Chevy head. So let's go ahead and look at the numbers though. Because I wanna show before and after. So there's that. Let's get this, one. this is our the throat test. This right here is swirl. So this was with the 91.5% throat. This is with the uh, larger throat. So if you look, you know, this is how much RPMs it's turning this blade that's inside. And this was 91.5%. From here, it's really not moving. It's it's 44 RPMs. That's all it's turning, which seems like a lot. It's really not. It's really not until 700 valve lift that it starts really moving. 
And it, by the way, if you didn't tell, it changed directions. So it's positive and it went to negative. So it went from clockwise to turning counterclockwise, fast. Now, here's the interesting part. This is with the bigger throat. It stays pretty much the same to about 500, then it starts moving, which it didn't do until almost 700 before that throat change. Okay, and also if you notice, the swirl itself isn't as high. Now I'll make a whole nother video about swirl itself. That's just that. But here was your bonus thing for you. This was a small block Chevy head, a 23 degree deal, uh, one of my Dragon Slayers. And I was just playing with it. This is its swirl. So it only flows 341 CFM, so not near as much as this. But if you look at its swirl from, it's negative, th it never changes direction one, but it also much higher swirl in case you're wondering. So just to give you an idea, its peak was at 30, almost 3,400 RPM compared to the peak of neither one of these is 27. So this is better. And even as far as swirl, um, if you look at even all the other numbers, it's into the thousands. This one's pretty much dead set. So that could be something related to porting. I don't want to go into too much on the swirl details. I just thought I'd include that for you guys. The biggest thing I was trying to get to was, here's your proof. You make the throat larger, you reduce airflow, you reduce pressure recovery. There's your answer. Numbers for you guys. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and tuning in. You guys have a good day.